African people came here f- over 400 years ago, and throughout most of that history, uh, they were enslaved, they were terrorized by lynching, they were legally uh, segregated and barred. Pope Clement V at the Council of Vienne, 1311-1312, he says that it's an insult, quote, to the holy name and a disgrace to the Christian faith that in certain parts of the Christian world, he says the Saracens meet to adore the infidel Muhammad, and they loudly invoke and extol his name each day at certain hours from a high place. This brings disrepute on our faith and gives great scandal to the faithful. These practices cannot be tolerated without displeasing the divine majesty. We enjoin on Catholic princes one and all. According to Ibn Fatlan, Ibn Dasta, and others, only the king and the grandees were followers of Judaism. The rest of the Chazars were Christians, Mohammedans, and heathens. But we're still wrestling with all of these dominant attitudes and ideas right. that have dominated American history. So you're right. We're in a very early phase of this period of time when it was legal to exclude people based on color and race. The Scottish historian McRitchie, in his book called Ancient and Modern Britons, Volume 1, commented that the first Britons were black in complexion. The Britons became more and more Roman. Even supposed barbarians living beyond the borders of the empire, from the Danube to the Clyde, became Romanized. Zara, that being of the ancient or ancestors of the Trojans, Brutus, and early British royal lines. The word angle uh, also may mean angel. It's the same as angel. In Hebrew lettering, it is spelled the same angel and angle. You know, I grew up in a community where black kids couldn't go to the public schools. Started my education in a colored school. The Pope Eugene IV at the Council of Basel, 1434, it says, quote, There is hope that very many from the abominable sect of Muhammad will be converted to the Catholic faith. End quote. John of Damascus, a Catholic theologian who wrote a book against heresies, in which John describes the religion of the Arabs as a Christian heresy. He writes, They denounce us as idolaters because we venerate the cross. They venerate the rock and say it's the rock of Abraham. Some of them say that Abraham tied the she-camel to it when he went to kill Isaac. The fundamental theology that the Quran teaches comes straight from pre nicene Syrian Christianity. In general, we can say that the so-called Meccan surahs read a lot like the preachings of early Syrian missionaries. The reception of the Old Testament, as well as Jewish Apocrypha, were likely also transmitted via Syrian Christianity and not Jews or Ebionites. The gospel used was the Diatessaron. Only the king and the grandees were followers of Judaism. The rest of the Chazars were Christians, Mohammedans, and heathens, and the Jews were in a great minority. Listen to what they're telling you. It was actually the leaders who were the real of uh, followers of Judaism. And there may be a connection between the word angle and uh, angel. are uh, spelt the same or using the same letters and they may be pronounced as very similar. And then right. these lawyers came into our community, made them open up the public schools. And that's how I got to go to high school and college and law school. They used imagery rather than systematic definitions, which once again goes back to this lack of philosophical challenges. There simply was no need to develop a deep philosophical system. However, after 410 AD, Hellenistic ideas were forced upon the Church of the East with the Council of Tessiphon, which means that within the Church of the East, this Syrian theology only survived in the gaps. Now, the writers of the Quran, they rejected this Hellenization of their Syrian Christianity. The next quote I want to look at comes from Pope Pius II from his address on the occasion of the procession of St. Andrew's Head, April 12, 1462. He says this, quote, Turn the anger of the Almighty against the godless Turks and barbarians who despise Christ the Lord. End quote. One of the mistakes we, I think, make today is we, um, we don't understand how we are in the very early days of a post-apartheid era in this country. Pope Leo X, Fifth Lateran Council, Session 12, March 16, 1517, he speaks of the Turks and other infidels, meaning unbelievers, they treat the way of true light and salvation with complete contempt and totally unyielding blindness. If you had a vote on whether to racially integrate the schools in my county, we would have lost the vote. The county was 80% white. 
Uh, but these lawyers had the power to make them do something they would not otherwise do mm-hmm. by con- Applying with the rule of law. The Quran also intends to be a new Arab book of Deuteronomy, teaching the right interpretation of the law in the tradition of Moses. The earliest Quranic texts were lectionaries. Meroe, which is said to be the capital of all Ethiopia. The people of the place worship no other gods but Zeus and Dionysius, and they have a place of divination sacred to Zeus. They send out armies wherever and whenever this god, through his oracle, commands them. The roaring threat of thunderstorms was seen as a product of a dangerous personal agent in the sky. A flood was seen as an act of a cruel agent in the river. This tendency to explain the natural world through the existence of beings with supernatural powers, things like gods, ancestral spirits, goblins and fairies, formed the basis for religious beliefs according to many cognitive scientists. And all of these quotes from the true popes are very relevant because we have countless quotes from the post-Vatican II popes, not only from their books but also from their speeches. We have John Paul II or Benedict XVI or one of the other popes referring to the Muslims as believers. They are not believers, they are infidels. John Paul II, by the way, called Muhammad the prophet. But not all scientists agree that religious thinking is just a product of evolution. The heresy of Vatican II, the idea that they, together with Catholics, worship the one true God, because does a pagan worship the one true God together with Catholics? Of course not. We're in the very early days of this post-apartheid era. I'm not a hundred years old, but when I was born... Uh, many states in this country banned uh, interracial marriage, uh, and you could not go to public schools. It shows how false Vatican II's teaching on the Muslims is when it says that they, together with Catholics, worship the one true God in Lumen Gentium number 16 and Nostre Aetate. Muslims do not worship the one true God. It's an abomination. It's something God abhors. It's not something he respects. The Turks, of course, refers to the Muslims, and he refers to them as godless. We're just beginning to reckon with that history, and the critical thing, of course, was the laws changed Mm -hmm. in the 1960s, but the thinking uh, has still not changed in a lot of spaces, and so we're still wrestling with all of these dominant attitudes and ideas. 